हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज शो मैन साइनिंग ऑन विथ माई यूट्यूब चैनल टूडे वी विल बी अगेन गोइंग फॉर सम ओवर व्यूज बिकॉज एट द बिगिनिंग आई थिंक इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो द की आइडिया ऑफ द टोटल कंस्ट्रक्शन फील्ड ऑफ पाइप लाइन एट द बिगिनिंग वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम पॉपुलर टर्मिनोलॉजीज हुईच आर वाइडली यूज एमंग अस द इंजीनियर्स in the drawing but maybe we have some misconception about this ideas this terminology is i have collected from the company standards here in saudi arabia company means our client from where we are taking the work which are not contradicting the international standard but with some added requirements in it but if you already know it's better to refresh our memory at the end of this video we'll be discussing also types of contractor working in oil and gas field for the construction work let us start popular terminologies design factor it is a numerical multiplier used to calculate the allowable stresses for transportation piping system this factor is used by asmi b31.4 and asmi b31. codes flow lines pipelines connected to oil and gas or water wells for production injection or well testing hazardous service any field service other than the category d is defined in b31.3 category m fluid service as defined by asmi b31.3 maximum allowable operating pressure maop this term is very widely used in hydro test field we always check the maop of the line in comparison with the hydro test pressure so in short maop is the maximum operating pressure of the line based on which the designer do all the calculations to determine the pipe diameter pipe thickness pipe material etc now code break let's say one pipeline coming from desert or pipeline coming from the cross country and then it enters to the plant area so there must be a code break one code to another inside piping there should be the code used for plant design and up to the pipeline there is a code used for the pipeline contractors so the physical location of the piping system from which flange joint the code changes that particular location is termed as code break this term is used in asmi b31.4 b31.3 as well as b31.8 also critical plant equipment and piping a designation imposed on the equipment or piping system that will entail extra design requirements with the objective of the minimum business interruption now our term cross country pipeline the pipeline and its appurtenances used to transport fluids across the country or offshore between isolated plant areas or camps design agency who is making the design the lump sum turnkey contractor or in house design organization this lump sum turnkey contractor will be discussed at the later part of this video design conditions all conditions such as pressure temperature ambient conditions service through which the pipeline or through which the system through which the plant will go through that govern all the part of the design and selection of the piping component so design factor it is numerical multiplier used to calculate the allowable stresses for transportation of piping systems this factor is used by b31.4 and b31.8 codes normal operating conditions the expected conditions such as pressure flow temperature ambient conditions service etc to occur during normal operation per design off plot off plot means area outside the plot limit off plot can be include plant areas such as road pipeways and open lots between plant units on plot means the area inside the plot on plot piping so here what it is telling that on plot piping generally is process piping which one of the design code extensively used are asmi b31.3 but if it is a pipeline the portion of the piping 
at the end of a pipeline where it enters the plant area, it is not necessarily a B31.3. B it can be B31.4 in case of liquid transportation and B31.8 in case of gas transportation. Perimeter fence. The fence which completely surrounds an area designated by Saudi Aramco for a distinct function, that means plant or camp. And then plant area. This plant area means the designated area engaged in production, processing, storage, transportation of crude oil, gas, refined products and their derivatives. It could be inside onshore perimeter fence or on the decks of offshore structure. Now, the terminology named as plant piping, as the name suggests, the pressure piping system within an identified plant area. The plant area, we have got the definition just before. Plant utility service, the supply of steam, water, air, nitrogen, inert gas within a processing plant. Plot limit, the on plot, off plot we have seen. The end of the plot, that means the fence generally, plot limit is a boundary within the plant area which surrounds with a single plant or function. The plot limit may be physical such as a fence, not necessarily a SSD fence, a wall, the edge of a road or pipeway. Sometimes there is a chain and post on a boundary indicated on an approved plot plan. That plot limit also a code boundary between the pipeline and the piping. Production pipelines, those pipelines engaged in transportation of crude gas or well from producing wells to designated facility for processing. These include flow lines, test line, trunk lines, transmission lines. In our previous overview videos, I have went through all these names. You, you know these flow line, trunk line, transmission lines. Here we will read some of their definitions. Process piping, we know as may be 31.3, pressure piping which is designed in accordance with B31.3. This piping is typically found in petroleum refineries, chemical plants, cryogenic plants and related processing plants and terminals. Power piping, it is also a piping used for power plant and typically found in electric power generating plants. Test lines, flow lines that are used for testing and an individual producing well without affecting the operation of the trunk lines. Transportation piping, name suggests it transports something. Pressure piping system that is designed in accordance with ask me B31.4 for liquid or B31.8 for gas transportation. Typically, this pipeline transport hydrocarbon fluids or others between processing plants or storage facilities to export terminals and end users. Trunk lines, pipelines to which two or more flow lines are connected, those are called trunk lines. Wellhead piping, the piping system connecting the wellhead to the first isolation valve. From this first isolation valve, flow line will be started. From flow lines, it is going to remote manifold. From remote manifold, trunk lines carries the crude or gas to the gas gathering manifold. Now in the standards, we can find some mandatory instructions. Let's say any pipeline or any piping or any plant, there should be a basis. That means international standard as well as company standard to be followed. Except for those excluded by this standard or by this ASME B31 point codes, all pressure piping systems shall be designed, constructed and inspected to a pre-selected ASME B31 point code as a minimum. So this is a company standard mandatory requirement. For example, piping standards shall adopt the latest edition of applicable B31.1 for power piping, 31.3 for this process piping, B31.4 and 8 for pipeline related utility pipings. Following areas, we should follow B31.1. Steam power generation plants, co-generation plants, steam generation plants design the pipeline with ASME B31.1. Piping system with the following facilities to be designed with B31.3 and also during construction we should follow this code which is refineries and petrochemical plants, gas oil separation plants, gas plants and NGL plants.
The following piping systems shall comply ASP B31.4 like cross country pipelines with hydrocarbon service, water injection system including pump station, headers, laterals, transportation pipeline in NGL service, water transportation pipeline, pump station including NGL service within a dedicated facility and a plot limit but not within a facility de designated as process piping. Terminals for transporting and shipping crude oil and AIDS products. The bulk plant including hydrocarbon service. Tank farm not within a facility designated at process piping. If it is designated by process piping, the code goes to B31.3. Air fueling terminals, sulfur line. Now the following piping system in gas or multi-phase gas or liquid service shall be designated as per B31.8. This is gas service, cross country pipeline in gas service, flow lines, test line, trunk lines in gas and crude oil service, gas compression stations in a dedicated facility and not within the plot limit of a process piping facility, offshore and subsea flow lines and pipelines, liquid sulfur transportation pipelines, cross country pipelines in crude oil service having a red vapor pressure more than 1035 kilopascal that means 150 psi we were discussing about code break and plot limits there are hail of confusions during code boundary i thought that we should discuss a bit what standard recommends us the code break shall be defined and well established at the at the early stage of the piping system design if the code break location is not identified a safety practically and ergonomically impact should be always the prime justifications for selecting the physical location. That means the code boundary must be defined. Existing code break should not be altered to meet new requirements or to match newly assigned code breaks within specific facilities. In all cases, the code break boundary between codes shall be on the side of the more stringent code resulting in the higher piping class. The following are the recommended location for the code break. Plot limit boundary, preferably the plot limit valve. Emergency isolation valves located in the vicinity of the perimeter fence. The isolation valve on the lateral line of an onshore scraper launcher receiver trap. So these are some ideas. Specifically, generally it is mentioned in our PNID drawing. If still we have a doubt, we have to raise the technical query to the designer to define the code break and the plot limits. Now let us refresh our ideas at a glance before we go to the types of the contractor. The first step for the oil and gas field construction area is oil exploration onshore or offshore through seismic survey. I have given an overview in my previous videos. If you have not seen this, you can go through this. So you can see this vehicle especially. This vehicle is sitting on the desert and transmitting the seismic wave. The, these geophones are seismic sensor which is de being deployed all over the ground like a network and connected through wires which is receiving the signal getting reflected by the seismic source from the oil layer and based on this received signal, the experts analyzing the amount of oil and deciding the exact location of the wells to be digged, where it is economical and the area where we will get the maximum amount of oil or gas. You can see the seismic survey equipment working on the ground. The geophones here is spread all over the area to be surveyed so that it can receive good signals from the ground. In this figure you can see a three-dimensional view. It will give you a clear idea. After the seismic survey, the location of the well is marked. Then comes the next type of contractor who are extracting oil, offshore or onshore of course. And it is called rig and scientific language it is derrick. This onshore rig, you can see a photo here. 
These people are working generally 12 hour shift and they always have a target to finish the work as quick as possible. Right side you can see an offshore rig. After digging the oil, these type of contractors, they are installing the critical oil head, the top of which is termed as Xmas tree because of the branches like tree. I explained in my previous videos. So uh, you can see the Christmas tree, how it looks at the left. It looks like an oil well and at the center here you can see a lot of oil heads are already prepared to be installed. From here the people will take when the well digging is completed they will install this one and that will be handed over to the next type of contractor who will be building the pipeline flow line that is called OMPP or onshore maintenance potential contractor. The oil or gas which will be coming out from the well has to be transported to the plants. Here comes different types of contractor, onshore maintenance potential contractor and then cross country pipeline contractor. Then it goes to the plants. Then there are contractors who is building the plant facility. In the pipeline, we can hear this term, you know, upstream pipeline, downstream pipeline. So this slide I have used only to define this. So you see upstream is the oil and gas exploration production, offshore oil and gas platform. Then midstream is the transportation and storage. So it is process and storage. And downstream is the product preparation and uses, so which is called refining also. So this is oil and gas supply chain. Now let us discuss about the oil and gas field construction contractors. So types of contractor based on the nature of construction, that means which field they are working. So we can start with the oil exploration survey contractors. These opportunities are very little and generally it is done by the government employees here in Saudi Arabia or in the Gulf. Rig construction contractor, they have opportunities. They are very specialized job. There is big safety hazard. Always, you know, in the reconstruction, there is a chance of accident and they have continuous 12 hour schedule, no holidays. And always they have a very hard target to finish very, very quick schedule. They need to finish oils and move to the next. So this type of constructor, they are paying high and they have a very quick rotation. Let's say three months or six months rotation of your service. Okay, then an onshore or offshore maintained potential related contractors, which is OMPP contractors. So cross-country pipeline and the last one is cross-country pipeline construction related contractors. There are plant facility related contractor also. I will discuss only up to the pipeline because this is my field of expertise. Types of contractor based on the scope of work, manpower or service based contractor, so which you can include the OMPP contractor. Why they are manpower or service based contractor? Because in this case, company is supplying the line pipe fittings and spools or most of the piping and pipeline material required by the contractor is supplied by the client. But contractor only needs to provide daily consumables, working tools, equipment, manpower, etc. They will claim unit rate against their invoice to the company. Also, the maintenance contractor, you can say they are also manpower or service based contractor. They give service and they will be paid for that. Rig contractor, we already discussed that due to the safety hazard and 24 hours work schedule, these employees are highly paid and they should be expert in their field. LSTK contractor. So this is lump sum turnkey project contractors. That means they will do the designing, procurement, construction, pre-commissioning, all the stages. That means they will hand over the project and it will be ready to run. So it can be the pipeline contractor, it can be the plant facility contractor, both can be lump sum turnkey project. Nowadays company doing the design by their own and they are giving only the procurement and the construction to the main contractor. So this type of contractor is termed as LSPB, lump sum procurement build. So company will be responsible here for design and drawings. As I said, this LSTK and LSPB 
can be awarded to the cross country pipeline contractor or planned facility building contractor also there are subcontractor there are service providers let me explain a bit subcontractor means they are taking only part of a work from the main lstk or lspb contractor let's say for backfilling subcontractor for the endi work there is contractor for the mechanical work for piping there is contractor so these contractors are subcontractors there is another term i have used the service provider service providers are generally company approved third parties who can provide specific services let's say third party civil lab testing these companies are doing giving calibration services they are doing the civil testing they are doing like electrical a lot of special testing it can be done from their laboratory when the main contractor will send samples to them or they can come to site to perform the compaction testing to take the concrete samples to check their strength another service provider is the ndt contractor non destructive testing contractor the service provider who are doing the welding procedure who is qualifying the welders they are all company approved third parties since they are approved they are representing the company so project inspection may or may not be present for during the test because they comply the company minimum quality requirements and qualify themselves to work as a approved service provider so today uh, you get some terminologies which might be boring but it is good to know to clear your ideas you can stop the video anywhere in that particular site to read yourself to clear your idea before you proceed to enter in this field and i have discussed you about the types of contractor available in our oil and gas field hope this information will be useful for you if you like this share this videos to your friends and subscribe my channel give me a like to inspire me to produce more videos for you thank you signing off showman